नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुद्ध so today as uh, we know that we are coming to the end of uh, the book 5 and uh, we are going to study the part of uh, book 5 which is about the sangha and so far we have covered about uh, four parts and today we are going to cover the part of part 5 which is titled as vinaya for the ladies and the title itself is very thought provoking because generally when we talk about the vinaya in buddhism we always talk about vinaya in terms of the monastic codes and uh, as we know that baba sambedkar was very innovative in approach uh, to see how buddhism can become relevant to everybody and therefore he wanted to open up the buddha's teachings and the buddha's uh, both dhamma vinaya for all the people irrespective of whether you are a monastic whether you are bhikkhu or bhikkhuni or upasak or upasika or a common human being you know who want who would like to have a freedom from suffering so uh, you know in a, in a very meticulous way as we have seen that baba sambedkar talked about instituting the dhamma diksha and uh, he he found that that was a biggest uh, difficulty in buddhism where we didn't have the uh, concept of dhamma diksha instead of that we had sangha diksha so uh, you know uh, baba sambedkar makes it a point that we should uh, if we if we want to move further we should uh, you know commit ourselves to the dhamma and therefore the dhamma diksha is very important aspect of baba sambedkar's you know conceptualization of the role of buddhism in the modern times so i find a similar uh, sort of an approach in part 5 where baba sambedkar talks about vinaya and when he talks about vinaya uh he is he has previously talked about vinaya for the bhikshus and at length at details he has talked about it but here in the part 5 he is talking about vinaya for the laity and this uh, part 5 is further divided into eight sub parts and those eight sub parts are one vinaya for the wealthy second vinaya for the householder third vinaya for children four vinaya for pupil five vinaya for husband and wife Six vinaya for master and servant, seven conclusions, and in the end vinaya for girls. So I think uh, you know this uh, uh, is little bit you know it looks lot of uh, some kind of editorial mistake that the conclusions are coming at seven and not at the end. But if we if we if we figure out how Baba Sambedkar has gone further in in explaining this, we can understand. So uh, let me begin with. Uh, the vinaya for wealthy and we have seen in the previous classes that the buddha is somebody who never elevated the poverty at the level of a blessed state of life the buddha in other words never ennobled the poverty and uh, we have seen that one of the four conditions that baba sambedkar wanted to see in any religion was that it didn't or it shouldn't ennoble the poverty and therefore uh, you know one of the criteria you know uh, by which baba sambedkar has has found his faith in the buddha's dhamma was that it doesn't ennoble the poverty in fact the buddha is encouraging people to earn uh, righteously and we will be looking at that some very interesting points here so let me go through this uh, three uh, verses of the part on the sub part 1 vinaya for the wealthy the blessed lord did not did not elevate poverty by calling it a blessed state of life so state of poverty is not the blessed state of life it should be clear to us that the buddha is not against earning the wealth righteously nor did he tell the poor that they may remain content for they will inherit the earth you know there is a concept in christianity that you know uh, it is very difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of uh, god you know it's, it's it's possible for a camel to pass through the needle eye of the needle but it's uh, very impossible you imagine impossible for a rich man to reach the kingdom of god and uh, but the buddha didn't uh, didn't uh, teach like that buddha never as we have seen that uh, you know elevated poverty calling it a blessed state of life on the contrary what the buddha did he said riches are welcome so riches are welcome what he insisted upon is that the acquisition of riches must be subject to vinaya 
So you see, even if we have a lot of wealth, you know, it is not just, uh, you know, to be squandered or to be spent uh, just like that. But as the Buddha says, it is very clear that even the acquisition of the riches is subjected to Vinaya. And this is a very important point that, you know, earning is subjected to Vinaya. And uh, another Pindak, of course, is a, one of the richest man who supported Buddha from Shavasti. And we are familiar with the story of Anath Pindaka as to how he wanted to, you know, give up all his wealth to acquire the Jeta's groove for the Buddha. And that story is very famous. And in every Buddhist, uh, many of the Buddhist uh, sutras, we can see this, uh, this uh, some, uh, uh, Anath Pindaka coming there. And this is what uh, Anatha Pindaka does. He goes to the Buddha and uh, he asks the Buddha. It's a question and answer. The Buddha is always questioned about something and the Buddha reverts back with his reply and it goes on. Question and answer, question and answer, arguments and sub-arguments. You know, till the points of the agreements are reached and then when the Buddha, then the Buddha can, 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 can teach what his dhamma is. So first, you know, he wants to know what is the question of the Questioner. So, will the enlightened one tell what things are welcome, pleasant, agreeable to the householder, but which are hard to gain? So, for the householder, for the upasaka, or for any common man, which are the things which are welcome? So, they should be welcomed, pleasant, they should be pleasant and agreeable to the householder. And we have seen in the previous section that Buddha didn't, you know, uh, divide his Dhamma. You know, this Dhamma is for monks, this Dhamma is for upasakas, not like that. Buddha teach it for the man. For the human beings. So here in this context, the question being asked is, will the enlightened one tell what things are welcome, pleasant, agreeable to the householder, but which are hard to gain? The enlightened one, having heard the question put to him, said, of such things, the first is to acquire wealth lawfully. So of the first thing that the Buddha is talked about, is talking about, which is pleasant, welcome and agreeable to the householder. What is it? That... The first is to acquire wealth lawfully. So the acquisition of wealth lawfully is not condemned by the Buddha. Buddha in fact says that it's welcome, pleasant and agreeable. The second is to see that your relatives or relations also get their wealth lawfully. So it's not just enough for you to earn the wealth lawfully, but also we have to find a way to help our relatives to find the wealth, to earn the wealth lawfully. And the third is to live long and reach great life. Three things, very important. So for a householder, it's very important that they should live long and reach great age. So three points. Wealth, encouraging the relatives to earn wealth lawfully and to live long and reach great age. For a true householder, for the attainment of these three things, which in the world are welcome, pleasant and agreeable, but hard to gain, there are also four condition precedents. So you see, without these four conditions, you know, uh, there, it's very difficult to acquire the wealth lawfully. It's very difficult to encourage the relatives to acquire the wealth lawfully. And the third is to live long and reach great age. So what are the four conditions which are very important? These are the blessings of faith. So there has to be the blessing of the faith. And we will look into that. So uh, remember the keyword faith is very important. Second, virtuous conduct, shila. The blessing of liberality, freedom, and wisdom. See, these four conditions are very important. They are prerequisite for anybody to acquire wealth lawfully. They need faith. If there is virtuous conduct, if there is a freedom, and there is a wisdom, then when all these four conditions come together, these things are a possibility. So let's look at it very carefully. That the Buddha says that it's 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 agreeable, pleasant, and welcome for a householder to gain, to acquire wealth lawfully, to encourage the relations to acquire the wealth lawfully and to live long and great age. Okay, so for that, there are four conditions which needs to be satisfied in order for one to attain to them. So what is it? The blessing of faith. Now, please pay care, you know, care, careful attention here. The blessing of faith and belief consists in the supreme knowledge of the Tathagata which teaches, you see, there has to be a faith in the Tathagata. There, there is a need to have a faith in the Tathagata. And what is, what is it, what is it in, what is it in Tathagata that we should have the faith, the Saddha, or what is in, what is traditionally called the Shraddha. 
or in Pali called a sadha, you know, something which holds on, on us, you know, it, it, it holds us to the path of the noble eightfold path. So that's the Buddha's supreme wisdom, supreme knowledge. So we should have a faith in the supreme knowledge of the Tathagata, which teaches the very famous Gatha. And this famous Gatha is, is repeated every day. So if we are a Buddhist, you know, if we are trying to walk on the path of the Buddha, this is called Itipiso Gatha. It's very famous. You know, Itipiso Bhagava Arhang Samma Sambuddho Vijja Charana Sampanno Sugato Loka Vidu Anuttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarathi Satha Deva Manus Sanang Buddha Bhagavati. You know, this, this every single word in this Gatha, uh, you know, is so meaningful. And, um, you know, if we, it, this is called Itipiso Formula. You know, if you, if you want a short word for it, so even if we are meditator or no practicing any kind of Buddhism, you know, we have to have this faith in the supreme knowledge of the Tathagata. That we should have a complete belief in the knowledge that, you know, Tathagata has got, his teaching has got the power to liberate us. This is very fundamental. If we do not have the Sadha in, in, in the Buddha's Dhamma or in, in the supreme knowledge of the Tathagata, you know, we won't succeed. So the first is to, you know, have this you know, faith in the Buddha. It's said surrendering to the Buddha. The Buddha, you know, it's, it's sometimes we, we might feel very contradictory, you know, surrendering to the Buddha. But it's a practice where we surrender to the teacher, the Buddha, the highest teacher, the teacher of the humanity. Why? And who is he? Iti. This is he. Iti piso. You see the word, this is, you know, iti piso. He's like this. How he is like? The exalted one. Bhagwa. The holy one, Arahat, the supremely awakened one, Samma Sambuddho, the perfect in knowledge and in conduct, Vijja Charana Sampanno, the auspicious, the knower of all the world, Loka Vidu, the incomparable trainer, Anuttaro, Purisadamma Sarati, Satta Deva Manusanam Buddha Bhagavati. See, the Buddha is the teacher of par excellence. He is he's the beholder of supreme knowledge. And that's what the Tathagata is. And if we have this faith in the Tathagata, you know, and sometimes we do it by reciting, reciting this Itipiso Mantra all the time, you know. And uh, it, it, it has this quality to, to, to hold us to that, you know, supreme knowledge of the Tathagata. Just doing it verbally, just, just, just you know, practicing it mentally, you know, remind, remembering the Buddha, thinking about the Buddha, who he is, what are his qualities, is so important. You know, the faith is so important. And in the individual life of the of, of our great uh, Baba Sahib we see this faith in the Buddha. You know, he has such a tremendous faith in the Buddha that, you know, there are examples when, when the people heard him talking about the Buddha, they, it moved them to the tears. They couldn't help themselves but to, you know, See Baba Sahib such a profound, such a deep faith in the supreme knowledge of Tathagata. So we, we repeat this itipiso formula all the time and think about the qualities of the Buddha. Itipiso Bhagwa Arhang Samma Sambuddho Vijja Charana Sampanno Sugato Loka Vidu Anuttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati Satta Deva Manusanan Buddha Bhagwati. See, if you if we if we if we do it all the time, you know, it, it gladdens our heart. And that's, that faith is very important. You know, it, the faith is a guide for us to go ahead. So, the blessing of faith and belief consists in the supreme knowledge of the Tathagata, which teaches. This is he, Itipiso, the exalted one, the holy one, the supremely awakened one, the perfect in knowledge and in conduct, the auspicious, the knower of all the worlds, the incomparable trainer of men, the teacher of devas and men. This is what the Buddha is. So to have a faith in Buddha is very important if the householder has to, you know, acquire a life which is difficult to gain, like to live longer, to reach great age, to earn money, not for, you know, himself, but for his, 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 his friends and the relatives. The second condition required is the sila, the blessing of virtuous conduct, which abstains from taking life, thieving, Unchastity, lying, and partaking the of fermented liquid. So five precepts come all the time, you know. So we see 
when we have a faith, then we practice sila, and these are very fundamental to Buddhism. The five precepts, you know, they are like the hearts of heart of the vinaya. You see, the, the, the you know the will the vinaya that the Buddha taught can be captured in this very very fundamental five precepts. And what are the five precepts? The blessing of virtuous conduct, sila, which abstains from taking life, thieving, unchastity, lying, and partaking of fermented liquor. So two. First is faith, second is the sealer, and the third is the blessing of liberality. Consist in householder living with mind, freed from the tent of avarice, generous avarice. Okay, so you see uh, the 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 uh, the uh, householder is 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 free from from greed. He is is free from the tendency to accumulate more than he needs. In other words, he shares. So what is it? You see, it's very beautiful. How does this freedom, this dana comes into being? And dana is considered to be one of the beginning of the, of the Buddhist path. You know, once we learn to share with others, once we learn to care for others, you know, automatically, you know, we, 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 we move towards what is called the, 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 the Buddha's noble eightfold path. So dana is very important. But how is, you know, how we become free? How does our mind become free? Because, you know, we are attached all the time. You know, from the moment we are born to the death, we are attached all the time. We are holding on to everything all the time. We are holding on to the essential objects. We are holding on to the ideas. We are holding on to the concepts. We are holding on to our wealth. But what the Buddha says, if you hold on like that, you know, you are not free. You are in the bondage and you need the blessing of freedom. And how do you get the blessing of freedom? You see, from to be, to be free from what is called the greed, not enough to be free from the greed or avarice. One should be generous, open-handed. You see, the Buddha's fist is never closed. The Buddha's hands are always open. Isn't it? You see, you see, if you hold on to this, it creates fear in the minds of the people. If your hands are like this, opened up to help people, isn't it? The people do not fear. So you see, open-handed. The Buddha teaches us to be open-handed. He teaches us to be generous. He teaches us to be open-handed, delighting in gifts, isn't it? So when we when we share with others, it delights our hearts, isn't it? It's very delightful to share with others what we have, and if we do it with the open heart, with generosity, then it delights our hearts as well. A good one to be asked and devoted to the distribution of gifts. So in other words, this blessing is very important. You know, if we are being stingy, if we are being, you know. Uh, full of greed, the Buddha says that you know it's very difficult to 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 acquire wealth. You see, it's, it's, it seems like contradiction. The Buddha talks about frugality. The Buddha talks about us talks about watching how we spend our money. But at the same time, the Buddha says that you know you, we don't have to hold on to our wealth. You know, in other words, we share. We 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 help those who needs help. So this is the third thing: the blessing of liberality, being liberal, generous. So generosity is very important. So if you want to earn money, we have to learn to be generous. The fourth thing, the blessing of wisdom or pradnya, is very beautifully explained. Ye know that a householder who dwells with mind overcome by greed, avarice, ill will, sloth, drowsiness, distraction and flurry commits wrongful deeds and neglect that which ought to be done and by doing is deprived of happiness and honor. Greed, avarice, ill will, sloth, and drowsiness, distraction and flurry, and doubts are stains of mind. A householder who gets rid of such stains of the mind acquires great wealth, abundant wisdom, clear vision, and perfect wisdom. See, as we move on to discuss uh, this uh, very important uh, uh, aspects of the Buddha's Dhamma, you see, the Buddha is ultimately asking us to you know, get rid of all those destructive emotional mental states, the negative mental states like greed, avarice, ill will, sloth, and drowsiness, distraction, and flurry, and doubt. So, you know, he's talking about the five fetters. Baba Sambedkar is talking about five fetters all the time, in this way or that way. Same with the Buddha, you know, he will come back to the areas in which we have to watch ourselves. We have to, you know, think of improving ourselves. So what happens when we take we we get rid of uh, you know uh, such things? The mind acquires great great wisdom. I'm going to read this gatha number ten again. Greed, avarice, 
ill will, sloth and drowsiness, distraction and flurry and doubt are strains of mind. You know, they are the strains of mind. They impure our mind. They cloud our mind. They don't let us see the way it is. They don't let us observe everything from the impartiality. They don't let us, you know, have the clear vision. So what happens when we are gotten rid of greed, avarice, ill will, sloth and drowsiness, distraction and flurry and doubt are strains of the mind. A householder who gets rid of such strains of the mind acquires great wisdom. So the path to the great wisdom in Buddhism goes via, you know, purifying the mind. The purification of mind is very important. What do we are supposed to purify ourselves from? From greed, from avarice, ill will, sloth and drowsiness, distraction and flurry and doubt. Because these are the stains of mind. And once we get rid of these stains of mind, it leads to great wisdom. Not just great wisdom. The, the Another phrase that goes with it, abundant wisdom. There is a, you know, limitless wisdom. There is no constraint on wisdom. Clear vision. You know, we, we, we are able to see clearly. Not with the clouded vision. We are able to see clearly. And perfect wisdom. You see, this, this is very beautiful. You see, this, this is so beautiful. Uh, the, the language is so beautiful. And and you see uh, when we when we when when I'm going to, I'm going to read it again, you pay close attention. The gatha number ten: greed, avarice, ill will, sloth and drowsiness, distraction and flurry and doubt are stains of the mind. They cloud our mind. They impure. Our, they, they they make our mind impure. We are not able to see clearly. We 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 in other words, we are ignorant. We are stupid if we don't work on our greed. If we don't work, work, work on our avarice, if we don't work on our ill will, if we don't work on sloth and drowsiness, distraction and flurry and doubt. If we get rid of such tense of the mind, what do, what do we get? We get great wisdom. Not only that, we get abundant wisdom, the, the you know, unbound, unbound vision. You know, there is no limit to our wisdom. There, the, the, the wisdom grows. In, in you know in, in its own infinite way clear vision we are able to see clearly the vision that that seeks the clarity everything is clear and it's perfect isn't it the, the, the wisdom is perfect you know there is no uh, what we can say uh, you know imperfection about that wisdom it's a perfect wisdom just to acquire wealth legitimately. Now see with the, 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 the end point of the, of the, of the section. Thus to acquire wealth legitimately and justly earned by great industry, amassed by strength of the arm and gained by, by, by sweat of the brew is a great blessing. The householder makes himself happy and cheerful and preserves himself full of happiness and also make parents, wife and children, servants and laborers friends and companions happy and cheerful and preserve them full of happiness is this from a from a point of view of the buddha isn't it he says that the 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 the, the to summarize this particular uh, you know sub part of this beautiful uh, part five of the book five of the buddha and dhamma the buddha never has elevated poverty and called it the blessed state of life and in some suttas, as Baba Sambedkar has brought it, the Buddha didn't like the poverty. He, he, he felt, he sometimes he compared the suffering with people having death. And he says that once he has attained to the one, the Buddha said, I'm debt free. I'm not carrying any burden of debt. So, you know, the riches is welcome. He, he didn't tell the poor to remain poor. And uh, he, he said that acquisition of riches is good, but it is also subjected to Vinaya. And then... Then, then, then the Buddha goes on explaining to Anatta Pindaka very beautifully. Anatta Pindaka asks the Buddha, what are the things which are welcome, pleasant and agreeable? You know, what are the things which are pleasant, agreeable and uh, what is called the, uh, you know, uh, welcome for the household? And, 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 and the Buddha says three things. First, to acquire wealth lawfully. Very important. Second, to help the relatives and the friends to acquire wealth lawfully. The third is to live long and reach great, great age. And the Buddha doesn't stop there. The Buddha says, how you can get it? And the Buddha explains that there are four conditions which are important for one to acquire the wealth, to make, to help others to acquire wealth and to live longer. What are the four conditions? First condition, to have the faith in the Buddha. 
you know what is what is that faith consist of it consists of the supreme knowledge of the tathagata which teaches you know this gatha that we have gone into iti piso bhagwa arham samma sambuddho vidya charana sampanno sugato loka vidu anuttaro purusha dhamma sarthi satta deva manusanang buddho bhagwati you know this gatha every single word and as i said this iti piso mantra is so powerful it's recited time and again and 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 we all should recite this you know understand the meaning of it you know invoke it whenever we 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 feel dull you know get in the in the in the in the presence of the buddha all his you know just think about all his qualities just be in his in his in the presence of his supreme knowledge so the buddha says that how faith in the way how the faith in the in the in the supreme knowledge that i have gained you know and if we do so it's a very important condition for us to acquire the wealth the second condition that that the buddha talked about is the five precepts so if we begin to practice the five precepts as the buddha says here then we have the blessings of the precepts we are the blessing of the faith we are the blessing of 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 the five precepts shila and then we have the blessing of generosity if we our, our hearts are full of generosity if we are generous if we share if we care we delight delight in helping others you know we 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 you know people can come to us they fearlessly if they want something they, they know that we can give them they can freely come to us and and you know this is the third blessing isn't the blessing of generosity having that open heart open hand and you know to be delightful in giving so i think this is a very important point and the third is a very critical point is the blessing of wisdom and 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 uh, you know the gatha 10 i have read a couple of times in this class but i have no qualms about reading the gatha again because so powerfully put by the buddha greed avarice ill will sloth and drowsiness distraction and flurry and doubt are stains of the mind these are the things that taint our mind these are the things that makes us not to see the world the way it is not to see the reality the way it is and because we don't do that we are subjected to doing wrongful deeds and neglect that which ought to be done and by doing is de deprived of happiness and honor so you see working on our 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 our, our destructive mental states non beneficial mental states the mental states which puts us in a in a dire consequences in in other words in the suffering the buddha says watch over your mind get rid of all this tense of mind and what does happen if we get rid of this tense of mind we acquire great wisdom abundant wisdom limitless wisdom clear vision and the perfect wisdom so these are the four conditions which are required in order to you know live a life which is based on you know um have a long life healthy life uh having this what is called the the the, the wealth acquired righteously and encouraging the other people to acquire the wealth righteously so what i will do i will stop here uh, for today because there is so much in this in this in this uh, part 5 uh, vinaya for lady it speaks in lot of different ways you know the things that we need to learn and uh, i'm going to stop here and open up the class for the further discussion so there is there anything sir uh, one question sir yeah sir uh, these vinyas are are uh, extracts from the vinya pitak or uh, or uh, it's from various, sutras, from various sutras from various sutras umesh bhai because this uh, what we are talking about is a teaching that the buddha gave to another pindaka so it's the genius of baba sambedkar that he has uh, you know uh, what is called uh, taken from the whole ocean of the tripitaka you see so this this points you will not find uh, you know maybe in the vinay pitaka and there is no uh, harm in 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 being able to construct the 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 the, the vinaya from 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 different uh, sort of the buddha's uh, uh, you know teachings which are in the sutta pitaka then i am going to one day talk about the sutta pitaka vinay pitaka and abhidhamma pitaka 
you know, as the condition arises, you know, there is so much things that we can learn from the Sutra Pita that, you know, even, even the, 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 the rules of Vinaya for the householders, the way Baba Sambedkar had talked about Vinaya for the wealthy, we can learn all this from, 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 uh, from this, uh, uh, what is called the uh, Sutta Pita. Okay. So this is how you, you approach because these are the legitimate suttas. Whatever Baba Sambedkar has 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 included in the Buddha and Dhamma, they have not been you know uh, uh, you know uh, they have not been uh, taken from any 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 illegitimate sources as it were. They are taken from the from the three pitaka and and you know they can be constructed and reconstructed, right? Umesh bhai? Right, sir. And, and the most uh, beautiful thing will be uh, how how to inject in ourselves all these things. Yes, that roadmap. That roadmap is very hard. It is uh, very well uh, said in this uh, first pair only, mm -hmm. which are hard to gain. Mm -hmm. Which are hard to gain. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, easy to get. But if you want something that is welcome, pleasant, and agreeable, of course, it's it's hard to gain. It's not easy to acquire wealth. It is not easy to see that your relations also uh, acquire wealth lawfully. It's not easy to live life uh, longer and reach great age. It's not easy. But in order to do that, the four conditions that the Buddha has taught about, I think they are supremely important for us to understand, to have faith in the Buddha's supreme wisdom, to have the blessing of sila, to have the blessing of generosity, liberality, to have the blessing of the Pradna itself, wisdom. And, and we see that if we, if we practice like this, if we have a faith in the Buddha, if we have, we, we cultivate what is called the sila, if we cultivate what is called the, uh, the generosity, and if we cultivate the wisdom, if we work on our minds, if we work on, 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 on purifying our minds, the Buddha says that, you know, it's, it's very easy to get all these things, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, Baba Sahib has clearly said uh, uh, in, in this Vinaya uh, uh, for the wealthy that the uh, medicine is sour, but its uh, results are sweet. <laughs> <laughs> very nicely. Very nicely. So, so, anything... to, so to uh, follow the teachings of the Buddha, hmm. and um, it's are very really profound and uh, very important to eat, remove suffering, but one must have faith or sadha hmm. in Buddha. Hmm. Unless you, you have faith, you cannot uh, understand and practice. Hmm. You cannot take it to your heart unless you have deep sadha on Buddha. Hmm. True. You see, this is very important for us to understand the meaning of the word sadha. Because, you know, we need something to hold on to on the path. Because the path is not easy. So we have the Buddha to hold on to. And the supreme knowledge of the Buddha to hold on to. And once we start having that faith in the Buddha. Once we start, you know, uh, coming in the presence of the Buddha. When we start thinking about the Buddha. When we start to become mindful of the qualities of the Buddha. And how they are lacking in us. And in, there was one among us who did it. The Buddha did it. He was, as Baba Sambedkar says, born as a natural son of his parents. He was not a divine being. You know, the divinity was imposed to imposed on him later on, for whatever reasons that we don't, I don't want to go into. But if you, if you just think about the Buddha, if you think about his qualities, you know, it 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 supports us to walk on the path. So the faith is very important. But the faith in what? Faith in not the faith in not the human person of the Buddha, but the supreme wisdom, the supreme knowledge that the Tathagata have. In other words, in the supreme knowledge also includes the Dhamma. The Dhamma of the Buddha. We should have the faith in the Buddha and his Dhamma. Isn't it? The book is titled as the Buddha and his Dhamma. You know, it's not without any reason that the book is titled like that. The Buddha and his Dhamma. We should have faith in the Buddha. And who is the Buddha? One who has seen the Dhamma. And therefore, we should have the, 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 the faith in the supreme knowledge of the Tathagata. This is very profound, you know, if we, if we begin to study it. And the next is the sila, the good conduct, the, the, the practicing the precepts, and then generosity, dana, and then, of course, bhavana. Bhavana leads to pradnya, cultivating the, the getting rid of the negative, destructive mental states. So when people say, uh, that which can also become Buddha, 
Hmm. But the, is this uh, correct to say that we can also become Buddha? Hmm. It is good that we can control our passion, Nibbana. Most we can that, achieve. That's, that's what live. the Buddha promised. No, Buddha said that you can be the Buddha. You can be liberated one, just like him. Isn't it? Provided but we are all ready to make efforts. It's for lay way. people to become Buddha. For anybody to become there. Buddha, you know, it's not about lay or monastics or whatever. The Buddha has never put a condition like that. Only uh, monastics will become the uh, Arhat or the Buddha. So he can become Arhat, but he can Arhat and the Buddha, supreme, other and the Buddha supreme is the knowledge, same. perfect knowledge. Yeah, Arhat, is Arhat, supreme Arhat and the Buddha is the same. Don't let's not go into these terminologies. <laughs> Arhat and the Buddha is the same. Bodhisattva and the Buddha is the same. Let's not go into this uh, categories of you know the state of awakening. Once okay, you are, but but Buddha had uh, supreme knowledge. Supreme wisdom. Yes. So, so Aran, we, Aran we also cannot have... be, uh, we, compare, we cannot compare our without, even after uh, gain, we become arhat. Still, okay. so there is no hierarchy. There is no hierarchy in the in the enlightenment. Like once you are enlightened, it doesn't matter what you are calling yourself, whether you call yourself Buddha, Arat, whatever. You are beyond the conceptions of the words. You are the, you are beyond the conception of 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 of, of knowledge. The test of freedom is the same. Isn't it? The Buddha says that, you know, the taste of freedom is the same. Just like you, you take the water of the ocean and taste anywhere, you will find it salty. Just like the Buddha says, you know, whoever has attained the freedom, how will have the same taste that I have? Isn't it? You know, these, these, these terminologies of the words, the, 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 the way we involved in this categorization of various realization, realization, small realization and big realization, it's not like that. Once we, we, our minds are free from the bondage. Once our, once we are awakened as, as you know, the verse number 10 goes, isn't it? Greed, avarice, ill will, sloth and drowsiness, distraction and flurry and doubt are stains of the mind. A householder, you see, very important, a householder who gets rid of such stains of the mind acquires great wisdom. What is the great wisdom? It's the wisdom of the Buddha. Abundant wisdom, the limitless wisdom of the Buddha. Clear vision and perfect vision. Isn't it? So it's not that, you know, it's the, the person who is awakened, you know, they, they have the small vision. Somebody has this degree of vision. There is no degree when it comes to the freedom, freedom of mind. You know, once our minds are free, we test the same thing that the Buddha and, and the, 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 the Buddha of the past, present and future have experienced. That is the beauty of Buddhism. Okay. Yeah. That is the beauty of Buddhism. You know, you test the ocean water of, you mm -hmm. know, ocean anywhere. It's the same test. Whether you are yes. Japanese, whether you are Chinese, whether you are Taiwanese, whether you are man, whether you are women, whoever you are, isn't it? Once your mind, once your mind is free from the tents, once your mind is purified, you know, immediately, you know, the great wisdom will come, abundant wisdom will arise, clear vision will be there, and perfect wisdom. Let's not get into this. You know, the Buddha has assured us that if we walk on the path that he has shown, we reach the same thing that he has experienced which is the same experience that he has experienced. But that's the long way to go. It's not easy. As we all know that it's not easy. So anything else? Uh, Jaivim, sir. Sukhdev ji, Jaivim, bola. Uh, sir, I, I don't have any question, but uh, I needed some clarification on the uh, this... this. Of, of faith in Buddha. Hmm. Uh, so um, I I also I understand that too, the um, before uh, having faith in Buddha, uh, one should have faith in yourself, uh, uh, oneself also. And the second thing is the uh, second query is that uh, monitoring mechanism mechanism for uh, get rid of the fetters. Because the uh, one who uh, decided to um, get rid of uh, the uh, fetters and consciously uh, observe, but uh, sometimes also the, he um, uh, made promises. He uh, divert it and uh, keep aside and uh, do wrong things and fall uh, uh, can commit uh, uh, ill will, every greed also. So uh, I need some clarification on this thing. 
I didn't get your second point. The first is, you know, uh, to have the faith in yourself. You know, ultimately, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you reach, mm. when you reach the end of the path, you have the faith in your own mind. Your mind is the Buddha itself. Yeah. Okay. okay the free mind, yes. the mind full of pradna and karuna is the Buddha mind, isn't it? There is no Buddha out there. You know, there is the Buddha out there. You know, in the in the in the in the historical form, there is the there are the people who have attained to the to the freedom in the world. Isn't it? And they are like our ideal examples. You know, we follow them. And, uh, but, you know, the, 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 the Buddha is actually the Buddha mind. And uh, if we cultivate in that way, we can, we can, we can, you can, you can, we can cultivate our mind to the level of the Buddha. And then that is the ultimate faith in yourself. Isn't it? If we have faith in the, in the self, in terms of the ego, in terms yes. of, 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 of what is called the Atma, in, 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 in terms of the something that never changes, something that is permanent, then it's a wrong faith. Yes. Isn't it? So, so you know, elsewhere, Baba Sambhadka says that, you know, there is the light that is coming. And if we activate our will in, direct, in that direction, we can, we, can, we can enlighten the world. So, you see, this, the faith in yourself is, of course, the faith in your confidence that you can do it. Isn't it? So the Buddha is out there in the physical form. It, he was there, a living historical person. There may be a lot of enlightened people in the world. But at the same time, there is a potentially you are also the Buddha. You are potentially a Buddha. Your mind has the same qualities. If it gets rid of the stains, have what is called in Buddhism, the, 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 the radiant mind. You know, the, 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 the knowing the mind as it is. Isn't it the mind which is free from all the tents? We cannot just imagine it. We can, if we experience that mind, you know, the mind of the Buddha within, then we have this deep refuge in ourselves. But if it if it is it is a refuge in your your ideas, if it is a refuge in your language, if it is a refuge in 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 in, in some kind of an egoistical, uh, you know, construct, then it's not the right faith. Yes. Okay, so what was your second point? Uh, Actually, yeah, second, yeah, second point, the, I think you mentioned is regarding the, the mechanism of monitoring the uh, fetters. So I think that is uh, well explained in the Arya Stangik Marga, Samma Sati, that is Samyak Smruti. And in that, that is uh, explained in detail. It's That's not, my yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this, this is, uh, this, this fetters, how we have discussed in the previous classes. And yeah, yeah. Uh, but my question is that uh, in monastic uh, experiences, each one uh, uh, observer and help each others to yeah. monitor and uh, get rid of the, uh, some of the, this uh, ill will. Yeah. And, uh, good, 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 yeah. good, good. I know but, what you see. Uh, and, 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 yeah. and, and when we uh, see the, uh, the uh, layman, so uh, life, so how can we uh, help each other? To get rid of the all uh, the all the this one the fetters, uh, right, right, evil, right. And every braggart. Good point. You see, this is very well explained uh, in 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 the in the next sections that we are going to follow the vinaya for householder. You know, this this is uh, you know the you know, here Baba Sambhaka has a very interesting discussion on how we can we can you know uh, uh, you know uh, monitor each other in terms of the friendship. There yeah. are various levels of friendship that Baba Sambhaka talks about in the next uh, next section. And we will be studying that in the next classes as to how we monitor ourselves, you know, how we monitor each other, how we become mindful of each other. And cultivating yeah. the mindfulness of each other is very important. It's a part of the Sati Patthan. Isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. It's, it's, you know, Eagerly waiting for next session. Yeah. So Thank if you... you if you if you if you talk about so the you would like money you know mindfulness within and mindfulness outside and the Buddha asked us to integrate both, so there is a word for inside ajata and there is a word for outside bhaidha, and the Buddha says you know in the in the end ajata bhaidha, so he's asking us to you know synchronize bring together both the inner and outer. Okay, isn't it? So you know that these these are the ways some of the ways we have, which we are going to look at how we can 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 look after each other. Definitely, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, Subdev ji. So, uh, should we finish the class here, or anybody have any anything? To uh, say? Anyone has an English version of Puja uh, part? 
बुद्ध पूजा पाठ डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर वॉल्यूम नंबर सिक्सटीन इंग्लिश वर्षन आई वॉन्ट Okay, that we can uh, discuss uh, in uh, other these things. I think uh, in the group you can ask, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure somebody can find out. Mm -hmm. Just one last comment uh, regarding the uh, ten number in Buddhism. So we usually find the word the Shabala, the ten titles, and actually this Gatha we referred in this class is that Itipi So Bhagwa Arham. So if we count this one, so these are ten in numbers. Right, right, right. So Bhagwar, Sampa, Sapoto, the Chatur Sapoto, so those are ten numbers. Yeah, that's it. Good, good, good. Thank you. So thank you all for joining today, and we will meet each other in the next class. Thank you. Yeah. So much. Yeah, yeah, yeah.